You are watching Morning Musings with Reinhard von Hennings, Chairman and Founder of Bridge House Law in Charlotte, North Carolina. What is an admission? Hello, this is Reinhard von Hennix. Prince Harry's recent memoir, Spare, stirred up quite a controversy. What is an admission? The story begins with a Duke of Sussex admission of past drug usage. That's what he wrote down in his memoir. This revelation sparked a curiosity about his US visa status and whether he was candid about these drug activities in his visa application. As we dive into the world of U.S. immigration laws, we find that there are three main areas where drug use can lead to a visa denial or a long-term ineligibility to enter the United States. In Harry's case, let's assume that he has a non-immigrant visa, for example, an O visa for how it's called extraordinary talent. This allows him to reside in the United States for three years and then to renew the visa year after year or after multi years. But wait, you may say, why does he not have a green card? Why is he not a lawful permanent resident? He is at least married to a US citizen. Prince Harry, in my opinion, likely holds a non-immigrant visa instead of a family-based green card for multiple reasons. First of all, obtaining a family-based green card would require him to be sponsored. This could be possible through his spouse, Meghan Markle, the Duchess of Sussex. However, the process is lengthy. And if I recall how hasty the departure was from the United Kingdom over the United States, it is unlikely that it was completed at that time. It also involves multiple stacks of documentation, so it may or may not be preferred. In contrast, the non-immigrant visa, like the O visa for extraordinary talent, allows Harry to reside in the United States for a specific period and it can be renewed thereafter. It is possible that given his overall professional setting, this is the preferred way. Additionally, holding a green card comes with obligations, for example, a tax application and residence requirements which may not align with his and his wife's lifestyle and preferences. He may just not want to be subject to the double taxation, to the income taxation of his worldwide income in the United States, which may or may not be subject to taxation elsewhere, or it may be tax exempt abroad, but then taxed in the United States. So therefore, let's assume he is a non-immigrant in the United States. So, I want to explore the issues what this admission in the book may cause for him. First, we encounter the health and medical grounds for ineligibility to enter the United States. This will focus on the drug abuse or even deeper an addiction issue. However, a casual or sporadic usage of drugs in the past does not automatically lead to an ineligibility. Let's talk about criminal activity. Of course, if there's a criminal activity, a criminal conviction, including a drug-related conviction, this would be a trouble for him to enter the United States. We see generally that a conviction is identical with an ineligibility. However, as far as I know, as far as the public knows, Prince Harry has no known conviction, so therefore he seems to be in the clear there. But wait. Isn't there like some kind of misrepresentation or fraud involved? You know, never lie to an immigration officer. The ineligibility usually requires a few things to happen during an interview, during a post interview, like hiding important information. I personally think it's highly unlikely that Prince Harry was asked about his drug use during the interview. So there is much ground to talk about the legality that he committed fraud. So let's assume. Any of those grounds would be valid and could be applied. There is still a waiver out, isn't there? A waiver process for most of those ineligibilities would allow a non-immigrant to bypass any trouble in the past. What is considered in this situation is the recency and the seriousness of the activity, the reasons for the proposed travel, the negative effect of the planned travel to the United States, or how this behavior is a pattern, a long, lifelong behavior. 
whether it's an insulated event or an event in the past, whether it was subject to rehabilitation or not. I believe, again, based on the curious mind as well as the information shared over the public world, that he is a solid candidate for such a waiver. Those drug addictions cannot be seen. Drug usage in the past does not really mean he is ineligible today. So for global business leaders, for global entrepreneurs, or for just an immigrant who wants to come to the United States, what can you learn from this royal roller coaster? First of all, it's important to be transparent, to see the adaptability in face of challenges. As leaders, it's crucial to be open to past mistakes. Second of all, learn from them and apply this knowledge to the future. Third of all, you need to understand the complexities of immigration law to find out the fine tune between admission, ineligibility, eligibility, and waivers. Only if you see those fine tuned intricacies, you can navigate the global immigration landscape more effectively. The Duke of Sussex and the United States immigration story regarding prior usage has a few takeaways. First of all, it shows the complexities of US immigration law. Not everything is just white or black. There are many, many aspects in between. Second of all, in Harry's case, past drug use by itself is most likely not a significant threat for his visa status because of his drug use without any convictions and the nature of his drug use, he's more likely to be eligible. Third of all, the story emphasizes on the importance of transparency and honesty. If he clearly wrote down in a letter to the immigration, I did some drugs when I was a kid and I'm sorry for that, never did it again, it may have been a much different outcome right now in this public outcry. So being transparent helps definitely. Even high profile individuals like Prince Harry, and that's the last takeaway, must navigate the same legal process. The rule of law applies to everybody. As global business leaders, it's essential to stay informed and to see the challenges. So my takeaway question for today is to you. What lessons did you learn from this and how can you apply this to your own company and to your own leadership style? Whether you're a private citizen, an international business leader, or simply someone eager to stay on top of the latest news, this book is a great way to get caught up on the most recent developments in the worlds of international business, tax, politics, and social affairs. Go to morningmusings.com and order your copy today. Thank you for joining us today. If you would like more information about Bridge House Law, please visit our website at bridgehouse.law. Before you go, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more up-to-date content. Bridge House Law. Business-minded. Client-focused.